Welcome to the Sellernomics Podcast, sharing valuable tips and information in the Amazon and e-commerce space. Each week, we deliver the best interviews with some of the top Amazon personalities in the industry to help you grow your business. Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. And now, here is your host, Rob Stanley. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Sellernomics. I got a good one today. I got Mark Casey, he's CEO of AmazonSEO.com. Mark, how's it going? Awesome, doing well, thank you so much. Excellent, and today we we got a really good topic we're talking about. It's kind of a big topic, it has a lot of room to talk about. Uh, we're gonna be talking about how to stand out on Amazon and get more sales. Now, that's a pretty wide thing. Good thing is I put together some questions for you. And we'll try to direct this a little more. And of course, anybody who's watching, we appreciate those thumbs up and those likes and subscribes on YouTube. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to post those. Uh, even if you're watching this video later, uh, after we've completed the live uh, the live broadcast, uh, post those down. I'll get a hold of Mark and we'll make sure they get answered. Uh, you can just post those down in the, in the uh, comment area. But Mark, let's jump right into this uh, big area here. But Let's just start with, and I'm going to throw a big one at you. What are some of the key okay. factors to a good Amazon listing? All right. Yeah, that is definitely a very large topic in itself. Um, there are a lot of things that go into a lot of things. There's a lot of things that go into a listing specifically. Um, it starts where anywhere from the main image to the keywords, and a lot more than that. So what I like to look at it as it's, it's it is a science. Um, that's the best way to look at it and view it. That you have to understand that every click and every little movement that a customer or whatever does on your listing, Amazon takes into account. Um, so thinking of it in that kind of point of view, in that kind of way. Um, that way you could build your listings much differently now and understand that um, it all starts by the main image where that's kind of the top of the funnel where people are kind of going into your listing um, and then continuing so on and so forth. Um, so a lot of different key factors come in regards to like the design aspect and actually the SEO aspect with the keywords um, and everything you kind of input there. So whenever... Um, just to kind of like step back a little bit, you kind of need to think in the in the uh, perspective of a customer or, or you know someone searching on Amazon is that when they're searching for a product, there are thirty or forty other ones, including like the sponsor listings and whatnot, that are also going to show up, and you need to be the one that can differentiate out of all of them. So that's where kind of the top of the funnel um, kicks in whenever you know there's uh, they're clicking on your listing. Once they click on your listing, you need to be able to sell them now. So a lot of people are like ah, you know infographics are not important. I'm just going to put some photography and it'll be good to go. Um, they'll just read my bullet points in the description. And the truth is no one's reading your bullet points in the description. And I can guarantee you 90% of the people don't. Maybe they'll read the bullet points, but most probably not the description. What I, what I say is use that area, the bullet points in description, use that just to feed Amazon. Those are great places where you can input keywords and teach Amazon about your product. So starting off, obviously, like I said, with the main image, um, it's very, very important. There is really a science behind it. I had a client come over to me. He ended up spending $10,000 perfecting his main image, and it took him over three months to do. Reason being is he tweaked up every little thing possible and did so many A-B testings that he found out what worked for him, and now he's selling great. He's selling beautifully. So it really starts from a, yeah, okay, having the great, you know, the main image, but also, you know, the, what's complementary is the SEO is making sure you're indexed and you're ranked and, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we definitely, uh, that that is definitely something you need to keep an eye out for is always optimizing, always looking for how you can make little tweaks to get as efficient as possible. Uh, just real quick, we had a couple of, uh, Couple of shout outs come in. Uh, my good friend and podcast host, amazing podcast host, Ryan Kramer said, Mark always shares great insights, take <laughs> notes. That's probably a good idea. Take some notes. So, or rewatch the video. You can also do that or listen to our audio podcast. So thanks, Ryan. We appreciate you jumping on. Uh, always try to help him out also. So let's jump right into the next question. And again, if anybody's got questions, feel free to post those in the comments area. Hit that like and subscribe on Facebook and YouTube. So we talked about kind of the key factors to a good Amazon listing. What are some of the biggest mistakes Amazon sellers make on their listing? 
Sure. There, I mean, I would say there's a couple of key ones and there's a lot of different mistakes people make, but people underestimate the power of infographics um, and how important they are. So people think, okay, I'll just go on Fiverr, hire someone to take something that looks decent, something that looks nice and it will sell, but there's a lot behind it. So for example, like let's say for the past 10 years or so, I've been focusing on marketing and branding. That's kind of where my background on, on this whole thing kind of comes in. Um, and then with my Amazon knowledge, I kind of combined both of those together to you know understand how the science behind everything works and that's how we create a listing so going back um infographics are very very important because that's where you want to teach the client not whatever the customer um on amazon about your product where they would understand it and make an impulse buy that's the most ideal thing you would want to do is for them to read and like hey you know what this solves my problem it's not such an expensive price or whatever it is or at least the infographics made me you know comfortable enough to understand what i'm getting and also you set the expectations straight. So there's a lot of things that go into infographics. One thing off the bat um, in regards to SEO, the, a big mistake a lot of people make, a lot of sellers make is in regards to the description. So what I mean by that is for, for example, let's say you have a, um, a plus content on your listing. Um, many people think, okay, I'll just put a nice design there and, and we're good to go. But what they are missing out on is the actual description itself. So many times I'm analyzing a listing and, you know, I'll see that, the, yes, they put the A plus content, the design looks great, looks very nice. But then I told them, I was like, where's your description? And I said, no, the description's, the, the, uh, the description's there. I said, no, it's not there. Um, and then we take a closer look and he sees that, yeah, you're right. The description, the A plus content is just there for design, but there's no actual description that Amazon's taking into account. And people think it's not important, but it's very important. That's where you're teaching Amazon about your product. That's where you're going to get keyword indexing, ranking, and everything, so on and so forth. So a very big mistake I, I see a lot of people doing is just uploading A plus content and not putting the actual description around it or near it or something like that, which gives Amazon your keyword rank. Another great, uh, uh, you know, a great thing that I see people, a, a big mistake I, I see people doing is putting their brand name as the first or second uh, word on their listing. First of all, you have to keep in mind, Amazon takes the first four or five um, words or keywords on your title as the most important. That's an Amazon perspective. The customer, they want to relate and understand your product right away. Why would you waste all, the, all, all that room on just putting your private label brand that not everyone, know, I mean, no one really knows yet, unless you're Clorox or, you know, you're a huge company, then people are going to be searching your thing by the, by the keyword. Um, you know, your brand name as the keyword, but until then no one's, no one's doing that. So there's no point in filling up all that space with your brand name because A, it takes away from the SEO aspect with Amazon and B, it, it just takes some space that people are going to see, especially on mobile. Um, the title is already cut off even shorter than it is on the computer, you know, on, on a desktop. Um, and if you're filling that up with your brand name, it just takes away and people don't understand what your product is. So what I would do is put the actual, like your main keyword, the main thing as a first four or five keywords on, um, you know, on the title. Um, and if you really, really feel like you want to put your brand name, put it towards the end, but I would suggest skipping it all together because Amazon still shows your brand name, you know, visible on your listing. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely true. That is some mistakes that Amazon sailors do make. And I'm glad you kind of pointed some of those out. Now you have mentioned SEO a few times, and I want to dive into that a little bit more. Uh, First, I'd like you to kind of just explain a little bit uh, just for some, maybe some of the newer people that possibly are listening or listening in on what the definition of SEO is on the Amazon listing and then also how important is SEO on your Amazon listing. Sure, definitely. So SEO obviously stands for search engine optimization uh, in short. So there's Google SEO and Amazon SEO. And the question I get asked often is, are they the same thing? And the answer is absolutely not. They're two totally different things. Um, and Amazon is its own ecosystem in itself. So you have to adjust towards Amazon's algorithm and how they work. And that's through SEO. Um, so that's everything having to do with having the right keywords and making sure you teaching Amazon's algorithm what it is. At the end of the day, it's not a human, it's an algorithm and you have to play along with the algorithm and you know, kind of complement to it. Um, so what's what's very important is making sure you have all the, opti you know, you're optimized with your keywords, uh, making sure everything's there, whether in the title, bullet points, description, the backend keywords, the search, uh, well, the search terms, right? Um, the subject matter, target audience, so on and so forth. Um, often I have a lot of people coming over to me and they said, I literally just spent like around $600 just for the copywriting of my listing. Can you take a look? I was like, yeah, it sounds beautiful. He's like, yeah, it does sound beautiful. You know, the bragging out about it and everything. So I asked him how optimized is it for, you know, for Amazon? Like, do you have the keywords in there? He's like, I don't know. 
It sounds really good, right? I'm like, yeah. But there's a lot more to something sounding good. You can make your listing sound beautiful, but at the same time, it, you could be missing all your search terms and keywords in there. So he's like, I don't know. You know, let's see. As I, 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 you know, we pull it up into our software, put his ace in there as target keyword. And basically it spits back uh, the, you know, the total search volume for, you know, first category related to that keyword. Um, and then his current search value. And I showed him like right there, data live. I showed you, I said, look, you paid five, $600 for a listing to be done. It sounds great, right? In regards to Amazon, you're missing all these keywords. And so it, it came back saying that he was like 250,000 search volume available. Like that's his total optimized score. And he was like, I think 30 or 50,000 at most in regards to the search volume he actually has in his listing. Um, so he's missing a lot. He's missing a lot in his listing. And I said, yeah, your listing sounds great. It'll work perfectly on a Shopify store or on a catalog. It'll look beautiful. But when it comes to Amazon, no one's reading your description. No one's reading that stuff. Yeah, they'll read a little bit here and there. But the main point is you need to cater towards Amazon's algorithm. And that's by doing and putting proper keywords in your listing. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. So like when I just look at it when I'm searching to buy something, right? One of the things I'll look at is I'm always looking at the title. I'm looking at the picture and then I'm looking at those bullet points. And unless there's very something very specific that's not listed in those bullet points, uh, maybe a certain feature I'm looking for, then I go down the, the description area to start really looking. But most of the time, if exactly. it's quick, I'm just looking at, you know, title, picture, bullet points. That's it. If you can't get that across in there, then you may have probably lose me as a customer even. So exactly. Uh, and, and you see that then that's like you're you're even saying it as like an average, you know, like a shopper and whatnot. And now imagine. Now these people have no patience. Everyone's like ADHD. Everyone wants to just see like, what's the product? What is it? I want to buy it and boom, done. Especially if it's an expensive product. I've seen people selling $200 products and whatnot, and they do not invest in their listing. To just take whatever, what's it going to even cost you? Just make it sound nice and at, at least, or at least if you don't do that, put the keywords in there. That's all. So you can start getting indexed. Um, but more importantly, spend money on your graphics. It, it, that's the number one thing that you need to do is that, okay, hey, you got someone on your listing through ads or through whatever, now you need to sell them to convert all the way through. Um, and that's by having nice, you know, nice graphics where they can understand and feel comfortable enough like, hey, these are my expectations. A lot of the times, um, you know, we had someone who was selling, I think a three, dollar $400 watch. So looking at it, I'm like, hold on a second. Okay, I'm looking, I'm like, why is this watch three, $400? It looks like an average watch. Hopped in a call with him, he told me, he's like, our watch is like shatterproof. Um, it's like an army military grade shatterproof, it's $300. So I'm like, do you realize probably not even once you mentioned that in your listing? He's like, no, people know. And you go down to the reviews and people are just flaming and just upset, fuming upset. And they're saying, I just spent $300 on a watch and it just feels like an average watch to me. But they didn't even know it was a shatterproof watch. You could have easily done that, even just putting in the title, people still don't understand. What I would have done is take those graphics and show a demonstration, show different features and, and what kind of like glasses used and all the, you know, in this specific case, whatever, but how, you know, what, what, what it stands behind. Tell us more about the product. That's why you're more expensive, especially a more expensive product. If you're not, you know, if you're not explaining it well, no one's going to buy it. And if they buy it, they're going to be pissed off <laughs> because, you know, they're, they're buying something with such high expectations. So going back, you're setting the expectations correctly. Like, Hey, a, B, and C is what we offer. That's that you know that's our selling points. Um, that's what makes our product good. And you know now that you know. And then if you go above and beyond, which is a whole other you know <laughs> topic in itself, um, then that's where you get good conversions with reviews and all, you know all that kind of stuff. But it, it's very important that infographics. There's it's underrated in what you could do. Even just by having better infographics itself, you can easily upcharge people. Uh, and, and you could be the more premium products just by having good graphics, even if your product is identical to the other person. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we got to take a quick commercial break, but uh, hang right in there because when we come back, I'm going to be talking to Mark about uh, how basically or does outside traffic help Amazon listings? I know that's always a big topic. So hang in there. We'll be right back in a couple seconds. Today's episode is brought to you by Gatita, the global leader in FBA auditing and reimbursements. Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash sellernomics. Yeah, so be sure to head on over to gatita.com forward slash sellernomics. Get your $400 in free FBA reimbursements for anybody new subscribing or setting up an account with Gatita. There's cost nothing to, uh, to set it up. And it's only a pay per recovery, PPR, what we call it. 
So once again, I have uh, Mark Casey, and we're talking about how to stand out on Amazon and get more sales. And right before the break, uh, we're talking about does outside traffic help Amazon listings? Mark, why don't you go ahead and answer that question and maybe uh, also point out maybe a few paths that maybe you've done or things you've seen kind of to drive that outside traffic also. I'm sure everyone already knows what answer the answer to this question is. And the answer is obviously yes. Amazon loves outside traffic. It loves, loves, loves more than PPC, more than anything. Um, when traffic comes from outside, there's a lot of data that they pick up. Um, and that's how they retarget you. And that's how they have the whole plan of how they're actually going to make you purchase a product. And not only one product, they're going to get you on their platform and you're going to purchase other products. So that's in short and why they love it. So once you're driving outside traffic, Amazon already gives you a lot of credit, a lot of a lot of a big boost just by driving traffic on your listing. Going into the next step is what kind of traffic is good. So Facebook traffic is is already pretty well known that it's considered cheap traffic. Amazon doesn't like whenever you drive traffic because the people do many chats and bots and all these things and, and they know and it's anyone could also just put up a Facebook ad and drive traffic to the listing. So they don't like that. And then going back and to 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 understand amazon sees where the traffic is coming from so for example <clears throat> whenever let's say you send me a link right and then i would get the link and open in my email amazon knows you know i opened that link and i came through an email so through whatsapp through facebook so on and so forth so they see where all the traffic is coming from so for example if you're doing a facebook ad and getting people to your listing yeah it gives you a boost but not as much of a boost so it kind of has it's like kind of the ranks of where different you know uh, sources of traffic come from and what kind of gives the best effect <clears throat> so, so i would say you guys starts with facebook traffic um and then it goes up to like okay then there's instagram then there's youtube traffic what i find the best traffic is underrated uh with google that's a whole other discussion in itself um but pinterest pinterest is something that is not touched upon um at least not enough where people underestimate undermine what the power of that is um and how much they could benefit and gain from it so pinterest is for all those who don't know i mean you would uh, everyone really kind of knows what it is and just go on pinterest is i'm not you know i can't explain it right now but what you would want to do is run pinterest ads that's a and then um another thing is you want to have people make pins about your product that's basically what it is if you research more you'll, you'll understand it better about having that strategy of people making pins and or basically posts on your product is good for now and it's good for the long term so what's the example what's what's the difference between a facebook ad that let's say you, your budget whatever once you run out of your budget it disappears it's not there anymore a pin or something on pinterest you have the post there and it's always going to stay there so it's putting an ad forever it's always going to stay there and the, the more you know the ages i would say the more seo it picks up the more it's going to be featured on Google for a random keywords you'll never think of, and it gets redirected to Amazon. You pick up the sales from there organically, um, and you get ranked. So, like, let's say someone types in, you know, best sports water bottle, and your Pinterest article was good in SEO, um, and it gets picked up. Your link, your listing will be there in that article, which is ranked on Amazon, ranked on Google now, um, you know, for your product. So, it's so underratedly, yes, it's very good. Um, any outside traffic is good, obviously high quality traffic, you know, those are the kind of the steps. Um, and especially, you know, during the launch, so I guess once we touch upon launching products and whatnot, I could explain more, but yes, in short, it's definitely very important and very good, uh, you know, very good to have that listed. That's interesting because I actually have not heard people mention uh, Pinterest, using Pinterest like that. Uh, and I think that's a great idea. I mean, Pinterest shows up quite a bit when I do searches. And, uh, you know, I think the other way you can kind of utilize that is if you built up a community and you've posted some pictures on Pinterest, you could ask people in the community to go pin it. And that would possibly help your uh, ranking out on Google, which would obviously drive people to the Pinterest, which would drive people to the Amazon. I think that's a great idea. And that's one I haven't heard. So very cool. We're always learning Mark, something new. So I'm glad. That's the whole idea of this, right? That's so, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. That's a great tip. So everybody be sure to make a make a note of that. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, reviews. Now, I don't know if Mark knows, but I come from sort of the review world when I worked at Feedback Wiz. And uh, things have changed, obviously, since I, I left there and mm -hmm. came over to, get, to Gatita. But what kind of things do you do or how do you go about getting reviews on your Amazon listings or what do you suggest to your clients? 
All right, reviews is always a controversial topic and it goes way back when and even to the point that my license plate is actually reviews and that's not a joke i <laughs> i was so involved into it and you know like five what is it five years ago seven years ago it was the biggest thing and, and no jokes i'm like you know what this is my license plate now if you see if anyone sees me you can say hi but it says uh you know reviews and, and so much so that reviews has become such a big thing on amazon and as the days go as on, as the day goes on, you know, um, Amazon gets stricter and stricter with them. So it's very hard, and it's always a catch twenty two. So often people ask me, um, you know, <clears throat> and you get reviews on my product. I said, okay, you need to do sales, but how do you do sales? Because you need to get reviews, and just keeps going in a circle. So you can't sell without reviews, but you can't get reviews without sales. So it kind of builds up, and it's always something very, very hard to do. So Amazon has the Vine program; they stop the uh, <clears throat> or the reviewer program. And there's no real answer that I would say that how you can get reviews safely that you're going to be good on Amazon. I would say, yeah, Vine is is, is fine. It's good. But um, Amazon keeps putting out rules that just make it harder and harder. So you can't ask your friends and family. You can't pay. You know, you, you can't do all these things to encourage any reviews. And then <clears throat> so what I, what I like to say in short is to, okay, fine. Let's say you do PPC or you do ads and revenue, get organic sale. I'll say follow up with those people to give you a review. But even now that I say that, now Amazon comes again and kind of the message is over. We're saying that you know they're very strict with the the uh, content or whatever you say in the follow up emails to start getting reviews. So you can't ask for anything positive. You can't push them in one sort of way. With their inserts, they're also even stronger and harder about it. Uh, you know, with what you could write there, what you can you can't write your content, you can you can do QR, all these things that they put into play. So my real question is like, how do you get reviews? Like, what are you supposed to do? to get real, genuine, organic reviews on your listing. So it's very, very hard. But <clears throat> what I like to do is kind of see how you can work with whatever you have already. So for example, you have a brand in place, right? What I would do is kind of jump on whatever you're selling already. You, you can push people to put reviews. As many as follow-up messages, people just opt out. It's a never-ending cycle. What I would tell you is make your brand experience so good that they're going to want to leave a review on their own already. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's a big debate I had with someone, and he could be watching now, I don't know, um, where I went to their office, I was looking at their products, and then he was selling like a $200 item. It was like, when, you know, massage guns when they were a thing. Um, and so he, I, I was like, how are you shipping the product? In a brown box, literally a brown box, you open up with like styrofoam and whatever. He shipped it straight to the customer like that. I said, are you insane? I said, you're shipping this. First of all, it's not like a five, ten dollar item. It's a two hundred dollar item. You're shipping in a brown box. If I was the customer, I would be, I'd be pissed off. Two hundred dollars I spent on this. It feels like someone literally just took it straight out of the warehouse in China and sent it to me. There's no experience involved in that. There's nothing that makes me feel good about purchasing this product. It literally feels like I'm purchasing a piece of junk. It was drop shipped to me. As much as I sat there to explain it to him, he didn't want to buy it. He didn't, he didn't believe in it. He's like, no, people just look for the product itself. They don't care about what, what it comes in. I said, you're, you're wrong, and you're wrong, and you're wrong. Even more so that I'm willing to bet you on it. He said, you know what, let's do it. So I actually made him a bet that I said, you know what, let's launch. You have two of the similar items, different styles. Let's, touch, let's launch two different SKUs. One, you ship out your brown box. One, I will even design the box for free. Let's ship let's make you know print it out what is a dollar extra with your manufacturer print out a nice label uh you know box let's start selling it a couple months go by he stopped selling his brown box and he jumped right onto the one with the you know with the nice box um and he started making all the sales there and the reason being is that people look for the experience more than look for the product when i open something on, on amazon even when i purchase i want to see how their packaging comes does it come in a nice packaging does it come with instruction manuals all that kind of stuff, or is it going to come in some clear plastic garbage? And I'm going to feel like, oh, it's just something you took off the shelf and just drop shipped in. Um, so that's very important to have a good user experience to for, for them to feel valued and for them to feel good. So going to the next step of like, for example, let's say you offer, I don't know, a water bottle, right? And then <clears throat> you include something extra without even listing it on the listing, right? Because going back to that saying, all about expectations. So if the expectations are low and you go past that, then you make them even more happy. But Let's say on your listing, you sell a water bottle and you want to give an extra item or a water bottle cleaner or whatever, I don't know, case, right? If you put it on your listing, then yeah, you're going to get a couple of sales up front, but you know the end result might not be so good. Um, but for example, let's say you sell as a regular, you know, a water bottle, and then once they open the package, like, hey, here's your free gift of a, you know, a cover or case or whatever it is, they're going to be so happy to, and they're going to be inclined to leave a, a positive review on themselves, by themselves. Um, and if you see, a lot of the reviews that people leave nowadays are more about the experience they had with the product rather than the product itself.
A lot of times a product could be, eh, it's not so good, but people will still leave a, a semi-positive review based on, you know, everything else looked good. It looks like a good quality product. Um, it just didn't work for me. So if you're going to set that up, you're setting yourself up for success where you can have everything kind of planned out where from whenever they purchase to leave a review. Um, if you set that up properly by doing the right things and do, you know, kind of investing in that a little bit more then your end goal will, you know, ultimately be very valuable. I like that idea. Uh, you know, I, I think you're right. A lot of people have a tendency if they're going to put, let's say a cover on a water bottle or something like that, they're going to put it in the listing to try to show value on the listing, which I understand. But if your water bottle stands out on its own and already has a lot of features or things that maybe other water bottles don't have, and you happen to get it in a nice little box, it has a case in there. Here's your free case that go, you know, or sleeve to go around your water bottle. I think that's a really cool idea. I'd be more likely to probably go leave a review because I kind of got like a bonus item and that somebody went above and beyond. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I love that idea. I, I think you could do that with probably all kinds of different products. You know, it, it, you could throw a little extra something in there. And, you know, unfortunately a lot of times people try to use that as a motivation to get people to go leave a review. And I would, you do not want to do that. <laughs> use the wrong wording. You're going to violate Amazon's TOS by trying to do that. But yeah. I think just doing it as a bonus, I mean, I think it'll make up on its own, you know, just from getting autumn, you know, natural reviews and and natural people just wanting to come back or come leave your <clears> review because you went above and beyond. So now maybe they'll go above and beyond. I, I exactly. Like that. I like that. You know, it's funny. I once had someone go so above and beyond when I purchased a product. It was one of these Chinese sellers, but they were very smart. I give them a lot of credit, even though usually I bash all the Chinese people, where, like mm -hmm. whatever, the Chinese sellers where they do all the crazy things. But one thing it was very good to give them credit for was I purchased a product and then they put an insert. What was the insert? It was a picture of, I mean, I don't know if it was really him, picture of a mom and dad and a baby, a family photo on an index, like a, on a postcard saying, thank you so much for supporting our small business. Thank you. You know, your review means a lot to us. Da, da, da. And who, like, you know, uh, like an average person sees a mom and dad and a little baby, and you're going to feel, you know, detach you emotionally, and they're going to go leave a review. I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? But it's a smart <laughs> idea. You know, I'm sure it converted for it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and got to just to point out, remember some of those things. Be careful with your wording if you're going to do inserts. That's all I'm going to say. So yeah, not to mm -hmm. go too deep into that. So uh, we are going to take a quick break. Uh, I know Mark probably needs a drink of water real quick. And uh, <laughs> we're going to, when we come back though, just so everybody sticks around and it's only like a 10 second break, but when we come back, I want to talk to Mark a little bit more about some of the best ways to launch your Amazon product. And again, uh, hit that likes and that thumbs up and leave some comments. If you want, um, want to ask Mark about anything about how to make your Amazon listing stand out. Uh, he is absolutely here to answer questions and we'll be right back right after this quick break. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at katita.com slash sellernomics. Yeah, so be sure to head on over to katita.com forward slash sellernomics. Take advantage of that $400 in free FBA reimbursements. And uh, of course, I appreciate it because it shows that the show is, uh, you know, doing something and helping out Katita. Of course, I do work there as CMO. Uh, just to kind of uh, back go back to our guest here, we got Mark Casey, and we're talking about how to stand out on Amazon and get more sales. And right before the break, uh, we're gonna come back and talk. I told him we were gonna come back and talk about the best ways to launch an Amazon product. Uh, there's a lot of people with a lot of different ways on how to do this. Mark, why don't you give us what is your best way or the ways you've seen to launch an Amazon product? All right, unless we have an, a full solid hour and plus, I can't go into <laughs> such detail because this is literally like, you know, years of work and everything like that. But I'll give you a quick breakdown on what's the best way that you could actually take action today. Um, okay, so the best thing that you want to do is okay, you bring in your product. Um, I usually like to break it up into two phases, phase one and phase two. Phase one is more of like, besides obviously having a solid listing, I already went through that and I'm sure... You know, people's ears are ringing for me saying it, but your listing needs to be solid. There's no point in launching your product or investing money through giveaways, through ads or anything if your product is not up to standard. If you have one or two photography images and no infographics, it's not worth it. If you don't have all your, you know, your keywords in there, it's not worth it. You're not going to be indexed. You're not going to rank, so on and so forth. Um, so going back to whatever you're saying about launching, so I like to break it up into two phases. Phase one is a soft launch. Um, so, you know, your products there, you do around like, let's say, for example, 75 giveaways. So 
touching into giveaways and what that kind of is, is that you want to generate sales. So <clears throat> that goes back to the outside traffic and all that kind of stuff is you want to do keyword focus sales. So I would say start your PPC running, let that go, um, you know, let, let that be on and, and, and target, you know, different keywords. I'm not a PPC guru or uh, Bucky or anything like that. So I don't know and I don't advise on it, um, but definitely you want to keep your PPC running and then start generating sales. So generating sales is, is, is usually what we like to do is through give, giveaways uh, where people purchase your product with a certain um, with a certain keyword, which shows Amazon you're selling on a certain keyword, and then you get ranked, so on and so forth on a, on a consistent basis, and then Amazon ranks you. So doing that, that's the definition of a giveaway. I get many questions about that often, and I really could elaborate on that a lot more. But in short, just to understand the idea so I could bring out my other points better, is that so a giveaway is basically where someone purchased a product, and they get a rebate for it. Uh, it's like a deal, like a coupon deal. You know, you go on deal sites, you see whatever. Uh, same idea here. Fine. So what I like to do is phase one is to have a soft launch where you do around like, let's say, 75 giveaways or 100 giveaways over like a 10-day period or so and start trickling in different keywords and, 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 and target to get the sales running. Since your PPC is also running, you're going to get organic sales. With all of those people, you follow up for them to leave a review and you, you gather up all your organic reviews. <clears throat> After the reviews come in, five or 10 reviews or so come in, that's when you want to go to phase two of your launch. Whenever you go to phase two, that's when you want to do a little more like heftier. Obviously, each product I, you know, is different in the price category. So whenever we advise on that, we go based off the product itself. This is just a general idea. So what phase two would be more of a heftier, like I would say 200, 250 pieces, spreading that over time as well, targeting different keywords, and then building it up. What people have to understand, and I'm sure everyone is familiar with the term honeymoon period, honeymoon phase, um, and that's basically whenever you launch your product, um, within the first 30 days minimum, that's where Amazon's learning about your product. And that's where you kind of need to, like, hey, they're giving you a shot, saying, hey, show us what you got. And that's where you need to prove Amazon. That's where you need to make, that's what's so important, not to just put up a listing and I'll fix it later. No. In the beginning, start off strong. So Amazon gives you more indexing, more relevancy, more visi visibility, so on and so forth. So um, within the first 30 days, that's the main honeymoon period. It, the newer the listing is, the better it is. Usually people say it goes to 60 or 90 days. Um, obviously, the first 30 days are most important. That usually starts whenever you hit FBA. A lot of people have different you know, comments or opinions on it. Usually what we see from our research is that once it hits FBA, that's when the honeymoon period officially starts. So you really want to bank on that. You really want to optimize and utilize that period of the honeymoon, you know, the honeymoon period where, you know, you can show Amazon, hey, we're selling. We just launched our product and already our ads are converting. Um, and that's the whole, you know, science and idea behind the, the soft launch. So like I said, uh, fast forward, you do the soft launch, you get some reviews and then you do, uh, you know, more of a, of a, of a half year launch. Um, a lot of times afterwards, what we like to do is do a 30 day campaign. Even if you're giving two a day for 30 days, still shows Amazon that you're consistent. And that's the key over your consistency is key to show Amazon, hey, I'm selling, even if it's two a day, every day I'm selling two with this keyword. Then they'll start to rake you organically even more. Um, and then you just build off of it. So I always like to tell people very straightforward that giveaways are, are a crutch. Um, you know, it's a crutch. It, it helps you in the beginning, but ultimately you don't want to rely on it. It gives you a big push. It gets you to the top of the hill where you want to be, but ultimately you want to be ranked organically and not have to use that. So that's a very important concept to understand is that, you know, you want to use this as just to get wherever you want to be and then organically convert. And how do you organically convert? Obviously your listing being well, you know, your listing being good with the graphics, the, the keywords, I said everything, everyone knows already what I'm talking about. Um, you know, making sure that everything else is optimized, your price is good. Um, and you're just, you know, catering on top of it, making sure that when people ask questions, you're answering them, that if you are an average consumer, even if you're an alien, you're a dummy, you understand what this product is. Um, so, you know, do following those basic steps will definitely lead you to success. <clears throat> Obviously, every category is different. Some are harder, some are easier. Some I would take it a totally different approach. Um, you know, we launched thousands and thousands of products, uh, you know, so each one I would give a different idea for a lot of them could be similar in ideas, but over the past couple of years, I hands down, we launched over 20,000, we did over 20,000 launches and, and the benefit of that is being able to pick up all the data from it. From each launch, we learn something new and we, we take that back and say, Hey, how can we improve more, you know, future launches? 
Um, another benefit is that we have our buyer network, which is thousands and thousands and thousands of people all across America, which are real shoppers. These are people buying everyday average items like cups, garbage bags, and you know, random things uh, you know for their house. Um, and then so we get their feedback, we get all their you know all their data from them, the shopping behavior, and we try every day to improve our way of doing giveaways by that. So. Going back on the giveaway topic, which I said I wouldn't go into, but I will. <laughs> um, yeah. the, the, main, the main thing is here that what Amazon's looking for is, yeah, to see people purchasing it. So a lot of times I get this question very often is that I just did 100 giveaways through another person or another software, another company, and nothing. It, it, it didn't do, any, do well at all. And I said, it's not about how many you do, it's, it's about how you do them. That's the important thing is, are you just doing all at once? Are you using a link? Are you using a keyword? Um, how long are you waiting until after they added to cart? How long? You know, there's so much that goes into play. So the benefit here is that we understand the shopping behavior. I studied the algorithm for seven years and counting. So I understand launches, giveaways, ranking, SEO in a different way than the average person would. Um, so what we like to do is, so yeah, we mimic an organic sale whenever we're doing our giveaway. So it's not just like, hey, purchase it and then whatever. It's being able to mimic a real sale, even if it has to do with waiting a, a couple hours or purchasing, adding other products, whole discussion in itself, we go that extra, you know, the, the next step, and that's where we see our results. So many people do, yeah, I did 100 giveaways with that person, and they'll come to us and do 100 giveaways. The same 100 giveaways that they'll do with them and us, they'll see straightforward the results. Um, even in three days or four days, usually we like to do our launches eight to 10 days, they'll see it in half the amount of time, they'll see that right away it's, it's picking up. Why? Because we know how to do them. That's the important key factor here is knowing how to do them and not just going on some random website or someone who just does giveaways and just a giveaway. It's not the sale itself. It's how you're doing the sale from start to finish. I love it. I love it. That's great information. Uh, we are going to actually wrap up here because I, I know that we could, I know Mark and I could probably talk on for probably yeah. another hour. <laughs> we definitely could, but I want to save some time because we're definitely going to get Mark back, uh, later in the year and we'll go over some more, uh, SEO and some more uh, great information regarding your Amazon listings. Uh, but Mark, I want to make sure that, uh, we get a shout out for you. Why don't you tell everybody how they get a hold of you? Uh, and, uh, you know, if they want to reach out to get maybe some more information or follow up with some of the things you talked about. Sure. So in short, I like to tell people the proof is in the pudding. We own the domain amazonseo.com. So if you can't remember that, then <laughs> not sure if you're in the right field. But anyways, amazonseo.com, that's where you can reach us. We love to help you. In short, what we do is marketing and SEO. So we help with listing creation, optimization, the graphics, infographics, keyword research, copyright, everything like that. And then we also help with launching the product. Um, and all the SEO aspects. So we not only help you with your listing itself and say, hey, you go on your own. We also help you to launch and kind of get out there and make those sales. Absolutely. So yeah, thanks again to Mark Casey, CEO of AmazonSEO.com. <laughs> That's not that hard to remember. It's super simple. Or if you want to email him, it's on the bottom of the screen. It's Mark at MarkCaseySEO.com. I'm sure they can contact you through either one of those if you can remember one or the other. Uh, Mark, Always a pleasure seeing you and uh, talking with you and you. Uh, lots, lots of trade shows coming up. So I'm sure we'll get to see each other uh, uh, pretty, pretty soon here in the next month or so. Just, just look out for this. Just look out for that little uh, Amazon yarmulke and you'll, you'll see yep. me from far. <laughs> That's absolutely true. It, it, it's always a, it's always an eye catcher for sure. Just like me, right? You know, I always got the yeah. money suit and then he's always got that. So always a good thing. <laughs> well, Hey, uh, thanks awesome. again for uh, coming by and being on the uh Selenomics podcast. I do appreciate it. And again, sure. once again, everybody, Mark Casey, CEO of AmazonSEO.com, or you can get Mark over at Mark at MarkCaseySEO.com. There's another way to get a hold of him. And uh, we'll be sure to have him on. And again, if anybody has any questions at the end of this podcast or you didn't get a chance, you can follow up with Mark or please feel free to list them uh, down in the comment section. And I'll be sure to get a hold of Mark and get a reply back. Mark, again, appreciate you being on. Thanks so much. For sure. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us this week on the Sellernomics podcast. Special thanks to our sponsor, Gatita. Did you know that Amazon probably owes you money for FBA reimbursements? Get $400 in free FBA reimbursements at gatita.com slash Sellernomics. Be sure to join us again next week for more great tips on how to grow your business. And thanks again for listening.